Shook her up, I shook her down. He away all of the one of those things where it says action click. He was thinking the same thing. Right, right. Take one. one. You are very yes. Go. It's the tenth of March and um Myself, Emma and Vivian are here to chat to you about colour codes and all of the lovely history that you know and all of the lovely things you've already told us this morning. It's fantastic. Um, so it's really nice to meet you, Betty. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us into your home. Thank you. Thank you. And you, Len. <laughs> uh, but I, I had a sister, Ray Doris, right. two years older, and I had a brother, three years older. Uh, both of them were in the war. She was in the ATS and he was um, torpedoed twice. He was in the uh, Metric Navy. Uh, and there was my mum and my dad. And my dad was a labourer. And my mum used to be a cleaner. But the, the, the things I can remember is going to the fisherman's mission. It was a real treat on a Sunday because after we came out, straight to Grandma's stories where she was making fish cakes and we would help her do it. And she also had a big pie dish of um, rice pudding with the, the uh, skin on the top. Oh, we loved it. <laughs> So that was a treat. So how old were you then, round about? Well, I'd be about four, three, oh, four year four old, uh -huh. yes, family. yes. And then, of course, uh, five year old. I had a little friend, Betty Crawshaw. Her father was drowned in a corbel with uh, um, John Dick. They were out in a corbel and they were drowned. And that was before she went to school. I can remember we're both holding hands, five year old. Going around, walking around to where uh, to where uh, John Street to this school, and going in, and when I went in, it was like a great big hall. The first thing I saw was a rocking horse, and then a great big clock, and that that's always stuck in my mind. Yeah. And what, what kind of things did you wear nowadays? Did your mum? Uh, well, my mum used to make her dresses, and she didn't have a sewing machine. It was always hand done. And she'd make my dresses. Usually it was white sand shoes, white socks, a little print dress and a little navy blazer. That's, that's mostly what you wore. Uh -huh. And when it came to Easter, you would get a nice fresh outfit, you know. You said your mum was a cleaner. Where did she do cleaning? She cleaned in Beverly Terrace. <laughs> I must tell you this. My dad says, he says, I went to the Colosseum pictures, and he says, uh, he said, I had a very sweet tooth, my dad. He loved chocolates. He says, I had this box of chocolates on me now. And he says, this lass came and sat beside us, kept looking at me chops, so he says, I had to give her one. And of course, it was my mother. Oh. <laughs> well, she was in service in Beverly Terrace. That's where she, she, she belonged, Wickham, which were in service at uh, Beverly Terrace. I thought that was really good. Lovely story. <laughs> and where did you and Len meet? The plaza at time of. With me dad. Well, it was the first um, uh, night that uh, we met. And he said, well, can I see you tomorrow? So I said, oh, yes. So he says, well, I'll wait across the road where the um, lake is. The lake, yeah. He says, I'll just wait by the gates there. So I had my friend, of course, we were at the dance with my sister and my friend. So when we got out and uh, we went home, I said to Betty Crush, I says, oh, I says, I'm not too sure about this. I says, tell you what, because she says, well, we were going to go to the pictures. This was on the next day, the Sunday. And uh, I said, well, I'm not too sure about this date. But I says, why don't we go the back way into the lake and uh, see if he's standing there? <laughs> And if not, well, we'll just go away. And there he was with a beautiful... He, he'd just been demobbed from the Air Force. So he had this beautiful uh, mac on, like a greeny colour, very smart, green shirt and uh, everything matching. And I said to Betty, Prometty. <laughs> Fantastic. 
that was it. How old were you then? Uh, twenty. I was twenty, yes, when we met. Mm -hmm. And what about, can I take you back to your school days? Mm -hmm. You know, when you talked about school, what was it like at school then? I love was it very strict or was it quite relaxed? Very what strict. What kind of games did you play in the, gr in the playground? Oh, uh -huh. well, just, well, what you usually had, yeah, you that top and whip, or, you know, uh, with a ball, mm -hmm. skippy ropes. That was the sort of thing you, you played had, with. Uh, what illness did you have? Oh, that was when I was seven. The whole class practically was at Moor Park Hospital. Oh, right. That's, uh, was it like a fever hospital? Right. Diphtheria and scarlet fever was rife. And I had both. Right. So I was whipped off in the ambulance to the hospital and uh, found that half the class was there as well. So. And how long did that take to? We were in there. We were in there about two weeks, and of course we couldn't have visitors. Oh. We had like a big uh, lawn, and at the bottom was these gates and uh, wrought iron fencing, and all the people were standing there handing stuff to you know. Oh. Your mother would oh, hand you uh, sweets or whatever. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that was that was your visiting. Where did you do your convalescing? He you didn't do convalescent. You didn't do convalescent. No, I thought you had like a bed and you would spend. Oh it. no, no, that was. <laughs> that's going on a bit more. Uh, anyway, when I came home from uh, uh, the hospital in the ambulance, my mum says hide before Doris and Billy gets in from school, and uh, I hid behind the gas cooker. <laughs> I was going loose. <laughs> Did but you have no. to pay? Did your parents have to pay for you to go to the hospital? Did no. Have to pay for you? For no, there? no, no, no. There was nothing paid. No. If anything, I suppose we were on means test, because my dad didn't always get work being right. a labourer. Okay. Did he work in the shipyards, or did he? Well, he did have a uh, time at the shipyards, but there again, another story. Fell off the staging, and he had fits after that, so he he couldn't work there. Uh huh. So you usually um, was labour on the buildings after mm. that. But uh, no, when I was about eight, I got headaches, and uh, I don't know if the open air school at North Shields. Can you remember that? Well, I was sent. There was a bus used to pick me up, and uh, would go there, uh, do very easy lessons. But there was like a, 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 a something like this, but there was all single beds. And after you'd had some uh, lunch, you had to go to bed. You had to. And it was lovely. I loved it. So and me, me, headaches, me, me headaches uh, did go. Uh -huh. I didn't pass for the grammar school. So I went to Linskill. And it was 11 year old. Yes. And. Uh, of course, there was no houses, big fields and that. And we used to walk from Colour Court to the school at Linsker. Uh, well, we used to cross the fields. And of course, there was always complaints because on my way back, we'd pick up turnips and carrots and <laughs> bring them home. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. So what age were you when you left school? Uh, be 14. And that was when I worked at uh, the chemist, Fatherly's. That was in Hudson Street, across the road from where I lived. And uh, I used to just go and wash the bottles and what have you. And uh, <coughs> um, Miss, Miss Hetherington, she was marrying another pharmacist who worked at Newcastle Boots. And uh, she was leaving the shop, so that's when I left as well. But I had quite a few different jobs. But the, the main job that I loved was uh, Burkitt's the news agent on John Street. There used, to, there used to be a garage. There's all lovely houses there now. 
uh, I think it's the Colour Codes Tea Cafe now. They've taken in. Colour Codes Coffee. 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 Miss Burke, was, there was a garage there, wasn't Just there? Just next door? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Could I take you back to the old house that you first lived in, the one where it's pulled down now? Can you tell us about that and where it was? Well, it was on Front Street and it was where the cobbles are, the, no, the kayaks, whatever, the boats are. That's where it was. Uh, and... Um, <coughs> Uh, I, I kind of think of the name of the um, avenue. Anyway, we, we, it was back row to us there. But there was all different families living in different rooms and that, and you, you try to keep yourself to yourself. Yeah. But overlooked where the um, uh, fisher houses were, where they had the um, stores out selling this, that and the other. And at the end was Alice, who always had her stall out and everything. I think there's a picture of her in the book. And anyway, uh, uh, my dad had a trumpet. He was very musical. He played by ear, trumpet, violin and uh, piano, organ, you name it, and he could play. And anyway, he used to open the window and, sh and play the song, Alice, where art thou, when she was standing. <laughs> <laughs> But is it that was, what the fishermen did then, days? Did they sell the wares outside of the house? Well, the willocks are on the crabs and that, yes, so. Uh -huh. No. My granny's story went to Stockton, used to get the train to Stockton to wow. sell her fish and really? that. Really? That one that way? Uh huh. But um, Joan Phillips had a sister, Betty, and uh, eventually, as my granny got older, in her 80s, she would uh, take her up in the van and they would just, uh, you know, sell together, sort of. Tell us about the fisherman's mission when you said you went to the fisherman's mission. Well, church. everyone you met seemed to be called Jefferson. That's who ran the fisherman's mission. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, everybody was something, somebody Jefferson. But uh, it was lovely. We used to love it. What did you do there? You said you, you had to recite some then when you were Oh, there. well, uh -huh. it was, um, yeah, it wasn't just an ordinary Sunday school. It would be where the, the um, Fisherman's Mission was packed with people, mothers of the, the little ones, who were sitting on forms and who would get up and say the little piece out of the Bible, you know? And what did you do after that? You said you may have to make the fish cakes. Oh, well, that was when uh, I used to go to my granny's in uh, Simpson Street, where she was preparing her stuff to go out on the Monday morning, and she'd be making fish cakes, and I, I would help. I used to love to do the breadcrumbs on the, the top and that, you know. And I can remember where Billy patting away, and, uh, <laughs> flattening them. And uh, then, of course, we got our treat with rice pudding. And can you remember how much the fish creeks were then? Oh, no. No. No, but where we lived in Huddleston Street, we were three doors off the fish and chip shop, Whitley's Fish and Chip Shop. And we used to get a, a threepenny bag of chips. And if we were hard up at home, that went around, that threepenny bag of chips went around. And my mum would say, go down to the fruit shop and see if there's any bruised fruit. And then another time it would be, go up at uh, the bottom of Whitley Bay, there was a lovely baker's, and go up there after they'd closed, and there was always a queue there, and you would buy for next to nothing uh, the bread and that that was left over, buns and cake and that. Yeah? Can you remember the war days, what they were like? Uh, yes, well... As I say, we, we, Doris and Billy were away, and... Uh, How old were you then? I'm, would it be... F 1929 I was born, so I was 10 when the war started. So I can remember uh, we had a brick shelter. shelter built in the back, over this sink. 
it's that <laughs> wasn't really right. We had bunk beds in and that, but we had to share with the people upstairs because there were flats in the uh, Hudson Street. You no, know, we lived in the downstairs one. But um, <coughs> uh, I can remember getting, uh, uh, it was a really bad raid and I can remember coming out of the shelter and when I looked, my front door was in the back yard and it was when there was a laddie playing the organ in the church at the end of John Street and uh, here uh, he was killed and everything at the front was at the back and we had a leather city and the glass from the windows was just stuck all in the city. That was horrible. Yeah? The church was bombed. Oh, yeah. yes, the bomb uh, hit the church, yes, killed the laddie and the la uh, whoever was teaching him the organ. I think there was some rogue bombs then, weren't there? Because I think yeah. that whole area. Yeah. Well, there was one down back road just on the corner, uh, a bomb had hit, and they reckoned that the lad had lit a cigarette at the door. Mm. And uh, this, the awful part of it, the lassie that was killed, uh, was in our class at school. It's from a colour code school. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so, what was it like having to go into the shelters? Was, have you got a vivid memory of that? Oh, it was horrible. Hated it. Uh huh. Yeah. And how long would you? What was the longest time you would spend down there? Oh, all night. All night. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. If you didn't have the uh, all clear. You had to stay there. You stayed there until you mm -hmm. did that. Yeah. And what about rationing? Was that, did that affect the family? Uh, not really, no. Do you think people managed better than I chips? think so. I suppose we ate more chips from the chip shop. <laughs> was that still open? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, never closed. Yes. John Whitley. Mm -hmm. He's in one of the beacons mm -hmm. picture. When did you move to Lynx Road then? How old were you? Oh, I was 15. Uh, they'd been building uh, behind the Park Hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> I think half of our street in uh, Hudson Street were given houses. Right. And it was absolutely amazing to have a bathroom mm -hmm. and to have a toilet inside the house. Because that was the thing. I hated going in the backyard yeah. to the toilet. Yeah. Oh, but... And what about the bath in the flat? Did you not have a bath there? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what we used to have. My mother would do a washing on a Monday in the backyard and she had a pot boiler, set boiler, and that was all it was filled up in the fire lit, lovely hot water. And she would have her um, post tube and a post stick and green soap, yes. lovely smell. <laughs> when she'd finished, she had a big white table that she used to do the scrubbing on. And here, when, she, when she'd finished and everything, there was still that lovely hot soapy water in the um, tub. I would go in first. That was me getting... <laughs> then Doris would go in. <laughs> and then Betty would... <laughs> That's how it used to go. Because we had a tin bath hooked up on the backyard, but oh, you know, heat and water, because we didn't have a, a, a scullery, kitchen, nothing like that. Really? Nope. Just at the end of the passageway, we used to have a bucket of clear water that, you know, we used to uh, heat up pans for our tea and what have you. Very primitive. Did you have water? In the house? No. Was it in the out, yard? Out, out in the yard, a tap out in the tap yard, in the yes. Did yeah. you share that tap with the neighbours? Sorry? Did you share the tap? Yes, with the uh -huh. yes, we did. Yeah. They were a nice did you couple. Have to pay for that? You know how we pay water bills and rent and poll tax and all these things? Did you have to pay no, for those? No, no, no. We just paid for rent, which I think was eight and six, something like that. A week. Eight and six. Dutchin was the landlord. Who? He lived in Whitley Bay. Dutchin, Mr. Dutchin, they called him. Mm -hmm. And eight and six. Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable.
Yes. And where, where was my grandma working at this point? Sorry? Where was your mum working now? If she wasn't in the service. Uh, well, <coughs> she went to the uh, Pocketel eventually. This is a uh, waitress, Margaret. Oh. She was the head waitress at the Pocketel. Because oh, it was just. I mean, we lived in Lynx Road and she was just uh, very near. Yes, lovely. And your dad, what was your dad doing then? Well, my dad, um, <coughs> he was just doing labouring. Just, yeah. Even when we were up at Lynx Road, uh huh, yeah. Billy uh, is, went to Blythe to live mm -hmm. and he married and uh, they had Blythe taxis. He used to run Blythe taxis. Okay. And my sister Doris, uh, she married late in life, but anyway, before she married, she was a receptionist at the, uh, not the Rex, uh, it was the Rex Hotel. Yeah, yeah. She was a receptionist yeah. there. She was at this hotel and she was the uh, <coughs> manageress and she met Gordon, her husband. And uh, after, uh, when they got married and that, they moved down to where. Uh, down uh, the the south of the country. Right. Oh, right. Down there, it was a big naffy centre there. Yeah. And that's where they worked. They were, uh -huh. down there. And what about when you got married? How old were you when you got married and where did you get married? Uh, got married at St George's. Oh, lovely. Uh -huh. yeah. Can you remember where you got your flowers from for your wedding bouquet? Oh, the croissants. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, now then. I think it was Auntie May that got them forward. Yes. It, w it would be. Because when when we met. Yeah. When we met, when we met, and uh, we, we, we caught it for six months. We yeah. met in the June, and we got engaged at the Christmas. Wow. And we went to Samuel's, yes. picked the ring. Wow. Got the ring. And then we went to the Empire Theatre yeah. and we saw Malcolm and Wise, two teenage lads, 15 or 16 year old. It was brilliant! Yes. So you got married at St George's? In yes. Record, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. And what about your dress? Where did you get that? Did well, uh, my sister-in-law, uh, Billy's wife, she made all the bridesmaids dresses and she made my dress as well. Oh. And it had a million little silver Oh, pearl buttons yes. down in like a taffeta skirt. It was lovely. And where did you go after the ceremony? Well, it was a cafe uh, in uh, Whitley Bay. It's not there now. I can't remember the name of that either. All made by hand. Absolutely gorgeous. I had five, oh, five bridesmaids. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. And who made your cake as well? It looks the cake was made by uh, Len's Auntie Anne. She was a chef in a school oh, and she made the cake. Is that a good looking young fella on there? <laughs> yes, <laughs> certainly is. Handsome. <laughs> you look beautiful, both of you. We had, uh, I mean, Len's family, cousins and uncles and aunts, he had four uncles. All with families and that, so there was quite there was quite a lot. There must have been over oh, eighty or something like that. There, in them days. And was that usual to, for people to be married in church and have a big? Oh, I think so. After, yeah. Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Never went to Scotland. Was that for you, honeymoon? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. What about the children? Where did you have your children? Where were they born? Do you have, is there, Christina's, are there any more? No, there's Jeff, Jeffrey, my son. Jeffrey, your son, and uh -huh. Christine. He's, uh, he was born, nine, I was married 1952, so he was born 1954, uh, <clears throat> and he was born at Wall's End. Right. At the Green, or Willington? Uh, no, it was at, uh, no, no. It was at Howden. Willington Quay. Is that right? Yes. That's where I had my two brothers. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I can remember when he was born. 
what, what had happened was, well, I'll tell you this. What had happened was, after we were married, I went to live, we went to live in with me mum and dad. We had a room, the room upstairs. This was in Lynx Road, uh huh? But we were a bit tired of me mum, people wanting to come up and talk and this, that, and the other. So there was an advert four flats for £100 in Thames Street in War's End. So he decided he'd go and have a look. And two of them were boarded up, and two were empty. So my brother borrowed £50 from Len's mum. We borrowed £50 from Len's mum. And we got uh -huh, £100. And we had, the, as I say, uh, <clears throat> we had to have the boarded up ones, that's right. We had two tenants in, that's right, yes. Billy had a tenant upstairs. And we had uh, Dossie and Boyd, he was a postman, with three young children in one room. But uh, <clears throat> I think we were there, that's when Geoffrey was born, because I had to wear. Uh, it was the green Geoffrey was born at, the green hospital, because uh, we had to walk up with my little suitcase when I felt it was coming. And in those days, you could sit him out in his pram at, uh, um, and, and nobody would, they would talk to him and everything, nobody weren't frightened of anything. So how do you think the life's changed in say colour codes from growing up, what, what are the biggest changes that you've realised now? Well, Looking I suppose... What your life was like then? Well, it's, it's, I mean, everything's a lot easier now, isn't it? We are washing, we are cooking, we are shopping and everything. Everything's so much easier. I so don't it was think a hard life then, do you It think? was. But it is strange to say it was a happy life. Yeah. And what was that about? Why do you think it was happier then? Because you knew nothing else. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, no thoughts of uh, holidays. If you were on holiday from school, I mean, there would be about three of us walk down to the uh, beach from Hudson Street. We'd been across the road to Hanlon's to get a bag of broken biscuits and then we had a bottle of water and we'd either go and sit on the beach at Colour Coach or we'd go on the uh, um, the, the, the field where the boats were, the cobles were, the boat field, and we'd sit in one of them and uh, <laughs> and that was our holiday, it was Not lovely. Sorry, entertained yourself. Is that during the summer holidays from school? Yes, the school, uh huh. And I can always remember when we got into teenage on a Sunday, it seemed to be a dressy up day. So we would get ourselves dressed and walk along to Whitley Bay, but before we did that, we'd sit on the bank top at colour coats, the seats, and people were walking by, all beautifully dressed, and we'd say, Oh, I like that one. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? And it was lovely. But is there anything else you want to talk about? You don't want to miss anything, you see. Well, I, I, I think I just remember the the neighbours and the friendly people all the time. We live here. There's nobody lives next door. And I don't know if anybody lives there. Yeah. Whereas at Colour Coats, you're always speaking to some of your neighbours. Yeah. Or you would see them somewhere, you know. But there was never any go to the cafe to have a cup of this, that, and the other. That, that just didn't happen. Yeah. But Monday night was uh, the Empire Night, the picture hall at Whitley Bay. I mean, you would see crowds of uh, our age as well, you know, teenagers, 15, 16, walking uh, to the Empire from uh, Lynx Road, picture of uh, the people who lived in Hudson Street. Celebrating the end of the war. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. And you've got a photograph. Could I ask you about your grandma's house where you went on a Sunday? Was that one of the cottages on Simpson Street? Yes, in Simpson Street yeah. there was one room. Yeah. A
at the right hand side. Yes. And you went through into another room. Yes. Which was, I suppose, supposed to be the uh, kitchen. Scullery. Then no, no, there was a scullery after oh, that. After that. Uh -huh. Yes. The toilet outside the back. Yes. And was there no upstairs then? Yes, it was. Uh, it was strange. Um, going up the stairs, you sort of, you, you were so quite near the wall, yes. and it was one big room. Yes. That covered the uh, the whole house, uh, the bedroom. And had she brought up her family there? Uh, yes, uh huh, yeah. Yes. Yes, because further along at 34 Simpson Street, where Joan lived, yes. her mum, Auntie Mary, yes. and her husband, Norman, yes. he was the uh, ticket collector at Colour Quotes um, Station. Oh, right. He was the only man there. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. He would oh. always be there ready to yes. take your ticket. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about birthdays and things? Did you celebrate birthdays? Not really. No. Did you have any family gatherings? Was there any sing songs or anybody on the piano? Or no, piano? no. And yet Len's family, they all did that. Right, okay. They'd have their Your dad came from Barnsley to Hall's End. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. 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 It was just because my dad wandered around all over the place, not for a job. Yes, right. yes. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And there was no working in the round here at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as soon as uh, Did you go on the train from Colour Station to town or anywhere? Oh yes. Uh, well no, not really to town would be no shields. Oh no shields, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. And you talked about someone taking their fish to Stockton on the train, didn't you? Yes, there? uh huh, yeah. They would get the train to Newcastle and then from Newcastle to Stockton. Stockton. It's a long mm -hmm. way, isn't it? Oh, well, mm -hmm. yes. there is. Especially in them days. Uh -huh. You can jump in a car and get there in no time now. But mm -hmm. I think in some of the beacons, they've got a picture of all of the fisherwomen waiting for the train. Oh, the train. Oh, uh -huh. it's, it's something I don't know. You, uh, <laughs> coming from colour coats, you, you don't shrug off somehow. In the, in the beacon, you see lots of fair. Uh, People visiting from uh, Australia, New Zealand, yes, who yes. belong to Colour Coast, yeah. who got the beaten, oh, yeah. sent to them, yeah, you know. Yeah. They, they, they couldn't let go of Colour Coast. Yeah. And isn't it lovely now that that's been regenerated? With e, the yes. Uh -huh, yeah. well, hello, George. Can uh -huh. I ask you a question about um, the water, you know, when you were younger? Did you go in swimming? Was swimming a thing oh, that you did? Oh, yes, in? yes. Because everyone now... Does yeah. this cold water swimming in it? It's a uh -huh. big thing. But I just wondered, when you were little, did you just naturally go in? And oh swim yes, in? uh huh, yes. And what did you think about the temperature of the water? Uh, well, when you, once you got in, you were all right. I mean, it was cold first getting in, but uh, we loved it. Uh huh. And what did you wear? What, well, what uh, some, some I can rem I can remember my mother knitting a one, of course, and that was terrible. It was terrible because once as soon it got as you wet, got it the was water that used to just hang. <laughs> but and then the girls and boys wear different types of things, or did the boys well, just Well, the boys go in just had their uh, trunks on, probably, yeah, you know, just right, okay. to their knees and that trunk, swimming trunks. Uh -huh. Yeah. So like, that's but different. I'll, I'll like to, we used to like to go along the pier and right. down the steps. Yeah. And then we'd maybe jump if, it, uh, if the tide here, wasn't yeah. too far. Uh -huh. We we'll jump into the water there. Oh, was that um, a lot of people would do that? It's not unusual to do that. It oh was... no, uh -huh. yeah. Because the thing is, we really packed. Was it packed the beach in the summer? Oh was... yes. Uh -huh. Can you remember where where did you do your shopping when you lived in Colour Coast? Where did your mum do her shopping? Well, there was Hanlon's across the road, which was a uh, uh, sold there. Uh, or provisions, yes, you know, biscuits yeah. and Hamlin's. Hanlon. Hanlon. Uh -huh. yes, that was yes. just across the road. Yes, yes. And uh, there was um, the fruit shop. Next to Whitley's. Uh, right yes. away down yeah. uh, the bottom of um, Hudson Street. Yeah. There was also, um, wait a minute now, black, black something, bakers it was. Blackburn's the bakers, was uh, it? Yes. Beautiful yeah. lace. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 
So you get your fresh bread there. Yes. There was all sorts of shops there. There was a little electric shops that had yes. little wirelesses and this mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then there would be the little shop where the woman would make these little, uh, now then, they were like in, in a little cake mm -hmm. uh, bun, you know those? Mm -hmm. And it was like a toffee. And you, oh, you, yeah. you would pay a halfpenny. Oh, yeah, or you would go yeah. in the shop and you'd have a prob. Uh -huh. you, you get a, a, a thing where you, you got a stick and if you prob and if you pulled the paper out, you either won a prize or you didn't. Oh, and it was probably one of these little... Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> so, it, yes. yeah, all sorts of things. Uh -huh. That's a lovely memories. Uh -huh. Can you remember, can was there a grocer's shop on Dull Street? Mr. Stevens? Shop. It wasn't on, for on what Dove Street. On, oh yes, oh uh -huh, yes, it was, it was down at the bottom. Yeah, it was. Yes, yes Stevens and oh, Ste wasn't his daughter. I think she worked there as well, or she took over because he was quite old. He was. He was always very old. Yes, he? but they had the loose butter and the Yes, loose that's butter right. And yes, the yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a popular shop. Yeah, that. It was. On a Sunday, my dad would have his trilby on, yes. his collar and tie, yeah. his uh, waistcoat with the the, 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 the uh, watch yeah. and the gold yeah, chain and that yeah, jacket. Yeah. My dad was, uh, as I say, he had a sweet tooth. And what happened on a Sunday is we would be dressed in our little blazers and uh, dressing that. And uh, here, oh, along to the Spanish city, Oh, and he would yes. do roll a ball, <laughs> get a great big bar of chocolate, yes. and that's what we used to eat oh, on the way home. Does, does anyone remember Doris' story? That's that's uh, that's yes. that is. Mm -hmm. And that brother, sister, sister Betty, and brother. Uh -huh. Billy. Yeah, no, this is uh, Yvonne, a daughter. Yes, uh, oh, Yvonne. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh huh. She put that in. She wanted to see if anybody had any more. Mm -hmm. Photographs or anything Doris, or another, yeah. you know. Excellent. Wow. Uh huh. Could I ask you about going to the watch house? I think we haven't mentioned that mm -hmm. yet. Well, Did you when we were little, we were, we were a bit in awe of the watch house because we used to see them playing pool or uh, billiards, whatever. And we used to walk around on the outside and look in, and we used to get real bad looks from the blokes. It was, so we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> didn't go in we the didn't watch house. Too long. But yes, it was. Uh, we're quite known of the uh, watch house in those days. And was that not somewhere that you went at all for Sunday school or anything? Oh no, 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 no. no. Ah, yeah, things and then no, just the fisherman's there. mission. Did you ever go inside the watch house? Did you ever go inside no. the watch house? Not then. No, not then. Just look through the window. Mm -hmm. I think. It? It, Eh? What was it? It was just where these fishermen used to have a game of pool and that and probably talk about the catch or whatever. Yeah. Me and Betty used to go down and play shops. Yes. Uh -huh. The sand was flour, the sand was uh, sugar, and uh, the booty money we used was always glass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always glass, different coloured glass booty. and that. Booty. And, uh, booty money, yes. Yeah. Because it was quite a, a, a small area. Yes. Jeepies. Yes. yes. And now they make uh, jewellery out of um, sea glass. Yeah, uh, they do. What, what you would yeah. call booty money. I've got cufflinks, uh, sea glass, and mm -hmm. down oh, I noticed yeah. yesterday in uh, the Lynx Cafe, oh, oh, they've right. got um, they've got a nice um, uh, pendant. Uh, it's a pendant, and it's just a. Bit of booty money, money attached money. to a chain, £45. Pounds. Wow. <laughs> Why is, booty, why is it called booty money? Why is well, it booty? booty? Because booty was, What's booty? was like... Booty well, it's just what we call the... Uh, uh -huh. Anything like that was booty. Yeah, you would get oh, broken okay. bits of plate Jakey's was things. different to the beach of colour coat. Jakey's was yeah. all shingle. Yeah. 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 I just, I had never heard booty, so that was really colour silver. You know the brown balls that you would... Do cake making in okay. that were white and so. Oh yeah, yeah. And you would beat your cake making. Yes, uh -huh. it was a booty ball. Oh, that right. was booty. Never heard of it. It was mainly cro broken crockery, crockery really, wasn't it? That you played with on the beach. Yes. 
Yeah. No, well, my mum has issue with that because she said it was always the, the sea the glass, glass pebbles the rather glass, than the yeah. rather than the it, yeah. it, it had to it had to be lovely and colourful. Yeah. We didn't just use all the pebbles or the ordinary stones as money. It was the the glass one. Did yeah. you get the coal? Oh. Because they still they keep saying that the coal's being dumped down there. And yet there are people who say it's no, not, it's no. sick coal. We yeah. used to go along the rocks. My mother would have yeah. me with a great big scarf on, um, tied at the back. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. Pixie hood uh, as well. Yeah. And uh, would go down with a, a, a bag and on the rocks would pick the uh, the coal. Yeah, the sea coal. And, and uh, um, the trouble was... When you put the blooming stuff on the fire, you say bang, 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 and you get up the road. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. old were you then, Betty? Oh, well, I would be about, probably about nine or ten, something like that. I think by the time I went to lunch at school, I thought myself above all that. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't going to do that anymore. Let me know. <laughs> I shook her up, I shook her down, heave away, haul away, I shook her all about the town.